Okay, folks, as promised, here is part two of the Triumph 675 triple review. This is the Daytona 675R. This is like the Mac Daddy of Triumph 675 triples. So, on top of the Street Triple R, you get these two famous brands right here. Some Olin shocks, Brembo monoblock calipers. You've got that same beautiful Triumph bark. And the other standout change over the regular 675 is down here, where we do our gear changes, we have a quick shifter. So it all adds up to, you know, a more track focused machine. So I'm pretty keen to get on, see how it compares to the Street Triple. And just enjoy it really. I mean, look at this thing. It's freaking gorgeous. Alrighty, Daytona time. I am so pumped. This is just gonna be a quick, quick impression how it compares to the Street Triple. And one other thing I will be able to tell you is, how does it suit a tall guy? I think I mentioned it earlier in the video. I'm six foot six, which is about two meters. So I'm not the ideal candidate for a 600 sports bike, it's fair to say. So I'll give you a feel for what I think it would be like for a tall guy to live with one of these things. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about here is my demo bike has the low fuel light on. Oh wow. It's actually quite windy here in Sydney today. And this thing's so light, I actually just got blown around by a gust of wind. Okay, obviously this is not a Daytona's natural environment chugging around in city traffic. But one thing I will say, you know, these Olins are supposed to be a more track focused suspension. They're still perfectly usable on the road here. You know, the ride's not jarring. It's fine. Initial impressions of the seating position are actually pretty good. Compared to the uh, GSX-R I rode, GSX-R 600, I feel like this is actually better for a tall guy. I don't know if that's because it's narrower across the middle, you know, with a three cylinder as opposed to a four cylinder. But yeah, it's um, it's actually not a bad seating position for a, for a tall guy. As you would imagine, you're raked quite well forward, but that's all part of riding a super sport. How nice is that quick shifter? Okay, so what I noticed from that little stint is that a lot of those nice little qualities of a street triple are still there. The fueling is still really nice and smooth. Throttle pickup is nice. It's quite tractable. You could totally use this. If you're okay with the seating position, you could totally use this er day. But where I, where I think the street triple's got it beat is if you want to do those four, six, eight hour rides. I think at that stage, you're gonna be feeling it on this thing. But um, Street Triple is gonna be more, more comfortable at the end of a long day. But wow, I, I feel quite lucky to be on this thing. This is, this is just, this is a marvel of engineering right here, folks. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece of kit. If you ever get a chance to try a Daytona 675, do so. And the crazy thing is, I say that using about, you know, 5% of its performance. I, my brain can't even begin to fathom what this thing is capable of when you get it near a racetrack. It must just be an utter joy. It's 
piss at these brimbos. Oh yeah. It's another ball smacker. No balls left. Crushed by the brakes. And then on top of that you got this glorious triple. As I was saying, you've got this glorious triple with a quick shifter. You've got Brembo brakes, Olin suspension. What more do you want? Seriously, this thing is just a joy. Absolute joy. I think I'll leave it there, folks. Nothing more to say, really. If you think you can handle the more aggressive riding position over the street triple, I personally prefer it to the street triple. But I totally get the whole horses for courses argument. They are very different machines and you're going to be pretty happy whichever one you buy. Farewell Daytona, I don't want to give you back.